Table football was first patented by a British inventor in 1923. It became popular throughout Europe, with leagues forming by the 1950s. A decade later, an American working in West Germany brought the game to the U.S., trademarking the German word for it, foosball. In France, the game of foosball is known as babyfoot. This company produces ready-made as well as custom-made tables, like this one featuring biker players. Production begins at a foundry, where workers melt down bars of aluminum. An injection molding machine shoots the molten aluminum into molds in the shape of players. A robot removes the casting from the injection machine. The mold yields four players, each one sporting the manufacturer's name on the front of his jersey. A worker places each casting on a press, then with one strike, separates the four players and cuts off excess metal. A computer-guided machine drills a hole in the center of each player through which the rod will pass. Then, the machine threads a hole through the player's back for the screw that secures the player to the rod. Another machine saws a two millimeter gap in the back to allow clearance for a screwdriver to tighten the player onto the rod. Once ready, the players move to the foosball table factory, where a worker sprays on a base coat of white paint. Once that dries, workers continue painting the players, but now using an airbrush. They mask the player's body to paint only his head. The company offers a selection of skin tones. Then, they mask the player with another stencil covering the skin and exposing the shirt and socks. Next, they mask everything except the player's head and feet. A player can be brunette, blonde, or redhead. They paint the shoes black, then the player's eyes and mouth. Manufacturers construct the table out of solid beach. A computer-guided milling machine profiles the wood components, drills the required holes, and engraves the company name. Workers then assemble the parts, starting with the four sides, which connect with bolted steel rods and glue. After closing up the ends with wood panels, workers install wood support bars which will reinforce the table, and after a goal, direct the ball to the ball return tray. The table now goes to the paint shop, where workers either stain the wood or leave it natural. For this model, they also spray red stain into the recessed stripes and logo. All tables receive a finishing coat of transparent varnish to protect the wood. They install the sloped ball return panel. When a player scores, the ball rolls down the panel to an aluminum ball return tray. After sliding the plywood table bottom into place, workers turn the table right side up, mount the aluminum goal nets and the scoring units right behind them. Then they lay the playing surface made of green vinyl on pressed wood on top of the wooden support bars. Wood trim around the perimeter holds the surface in place. A worker mounts the players for each line onto a hollow stainless steel rod. Using a template to space them correctly, he bolts each player to the rod, then attaches a rubber bumper to the players at each end to prevent them from slamming against the sidewalls. He inserts a narrower stainless steel rod into the hollow bar to make it telescopic. After preparing eight rods of players, a worker installs them in the table. The telescoping handle end of the rod has a spring-loaded bearing that fits in a hole in the table. He secures it from the outside. After bolting the opposite end, Workers protect the top edge of the table with a plastic trim. After threading plastic handles to the telescopic end of the rods and mounting the tables on four sturdy solid wood legs, 
this foosball table is ready for kickoff. Marseille soap is a vegetable oil-based soap first handcrafted in the port city of Marseille, France in the Middle Ages. This gentle hypoallergenic all-purpose block soap became prized across Europe for washing clothes, dishes, floors, and cleansing oneself. Marseille soap is crafted from just four traditional ingredients with no animal fats, colorants, perfumes, or preservatives. It's still produced today as it has been for more than 600 years. The four ingredients are sea salt, water, on the right, caustic soda, and either coconut oil, palm oil, or most often, olive pomace oil. The second oil extracted from olives after they've been pressed to extract virgin olive oil for consumption. A worker releases the required quantities of oil and caustic soda into a cooking cauldron, then brings the mixture to a boil while stirring for one to two days. The fatty acids in the oil react to the alkaline caustic soda, producing a thick soap paste containing glycerin, a natural compound. This transformation is known as saponification. Workers add more caustic soda and cook at 248 degrees Fahrenheit for another day. They wash the paste with salt water two or three times, each washing lasting half a day. This removes impurities and glycerin. Without glycerin, the soap has better detergent power to remove grease stains on fabric. Next, over the course of a day, the workers repeatedly rinse the boiling soap paste with fresh water. Then they let it set for two days. They reheat the paste for about 10 minutes at 158 degrees Fahrenheit, just to re-soften it enough to be pumped to a series of superheaters. The superheaters heat the paste to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, liquefying it. As the liquid soap leaves the last superheater, it passes through a nozzle, which sprays it onto the walls of an atomizer. The atomizer cools the soap under vacuum, solidifying it into a dry, moldable consistency. Motorized blades then scrape the dried soap from the atomizer walls. The soap falls directly into an extrusion machine, which works much like a pasta maker. The machine forces the soap through small round dies as revolving blades chop it into noodles. As the soap noodles fall onto the conveyor belt, the soap workshop chief inspects the quality by assessing the color, the aroma, and the texture. At the company's in-house lab, a technician conducts quality control tests on samples drawn from each production run. In this test, he measures the percentage of pure soap. He weighs the sample, then heats it in a microwave oven for 10 minutes to evaporate all the moisture. This leaves only pure soap without water. He reweighs the sample to calculate the percentage of pure soap, as well as the oil content, which must be 72%. The factory sells a portion of its Marseille soap noodles to companies who mold their own soap bars. It also molds a house brand right here, compressing the noodles into a homogeneous paste, then extruding a long, continuous bar. An automated guillotine slices the bar into the selected shape. The conveyor belt ferries the cubes to the stamping machine, which stamps all six sides. Each cube bears the company's name and logo, the soap's oil content, and the Savant de Marseille designation, attesting that this is indeed authentic, traditionally made Marseille soap.